Well, hello everyone, it's Pastor Mark, and you're joining me on Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020, as we continue down the road of reading these letters to Timothy, uh, and we're in 2 Timothy chapter 2 today. Let's pray. Father, thank you, and uh, be with us as we study this very important chapter, chock full of, of good information, good practical and spiritual points for us to learn. Lord, be with us that we might learn something today. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'm getting a little uh, late start on this devotional today, but I'm going to get it in. I'm going to get it to you so that you can enjoy God's Word on this Wednesday. So, um, well, let's just jump into it. 2 Timothy chapter 2. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Here is a trustworthy saying, If we died with him, he will also, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we disown him, he will also disown us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot disown himself. Keep reminding God's people of these things. Warn them before God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker, who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Avoid godless chatter, because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Their teaching will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hymenaeus and Philetus, who have departed from the truth. They say that the resurrection has already taken place, and they destroy the faith of some. Nevertheless, God's solid foundation stands firm, sealed with this inscription, The Lord knows those who are His, and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. In a large house there are articles, not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some are for special purposes, and some are for common use. Those who cleanse themselves from the latter will be instruments for special purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments, because you know they produce quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. Opponents must be gently instructed, in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of the truth, and that they will come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, who has taken them captive to do his will. A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff in this chapter. I, I just I want to touch on two things. Again, I, I try to limit these Bible studies to 10 or 15 minutes, and so I have to really whittle things down and pick and choose what I want to talk about. But I do want to talk about something here, a little obscure part of this passage. A couple of obscure parts, but one obscure part happens in, in the beginning, starting in verse 3. It says, join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. So he's using the imagery of a soldier. And then he says in verse 4, no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share 
of the crops. And so several imageries here, so imagery, imagery, Im, several bits of imagery used here. One is a soldier. Uh, we see the other is an athlete, and one is a hardworking farmer. And it, again, kind of obscure, what's he talking about here? What I read when I read this, what I'm hearing when I read this, is singularity of task, singularity of purpose. Stay on target spiritually. It's so easy. And, and the reason I believe that is in context, he's talking about quarrel, quarreling. Don't start quarreling. He, sa- he talks about, I'm going to talk about that in a minute, but he talks about that a lot in this chapter. Don't just be quarrelsome. Don't argue just to argue. Okay? In other words, stay on target in your faith. Do the things that God has called you to do. Don't just get in bitter arguments and quarrels, but s- stay uh, uh, true to the message that God has sent you as a follower of Christ, stay true to that message. Preach and teach that message he's telling Timothy. Don't get off on all these tangents and rabbit trails and quarrelsome and argue. Stay on target with the basic message of Christ, which he says, remember Jesus Christ, verse 8. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David. Remember that. This is the gospel, he says. So he's saying stay on target. And you can kind of see that, right? In verse 4, no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs. In other words, soldiers don't worry about what's going on outside of their soldiering tasks. They don't worry about what's going on outside of the, the battle or the war or what they have to do as uh, professional soldiers, but rather they please their commanding officer. In other words, they do what it takes to follow the orders of the commanding officer. They do what the commanding officer says. They stay on task. And isn't it easy in our lives of faith? We, we know what God wants us to do. Maybe we have our ministry. We know, we're, we know where God wants us to serve. We know what our spiritual gifts are. But oftentimes, we, we want to go do something else. We don't want to stay on task for God and do the things that he's called us to do. We want to do the other attractive things that the world's throwing up in front of us, don't we? But the imagery of the soldier is the soldier stays on task and continues to do what he's ordered to do by the commanding officer, not things that are happening in the civilian world. And he takes that imagery on again and and says similarly in verse 5, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown. In other words, he's not successful as an athlete except by competing according to the rules. In other words, continuing to focus on the rules of that sport, whatever it is, staying on task in that sport is what brings success, what brings victory. So the soldier follows the command, the commander's orders. The athlete follows the rules for that sport. And the implication is both of these can be successful if they stay on task. Then he goes on to the the hardworking farmer. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. In other words, the farmer who stays hardworking in the task of farming, planting, growing, harvesting, is the one who then should reap first the benefits of that labor. In other words, he's successful. He enjoys the fruits of his labor because he stays on task and works hard in the, in the farming task, right? In the farming endeavor. So do you see this? So Paul is telling Timothy, stay on task, major on the majors. Don't get, don't go down these rabbit trails. And he'll tell us what those rabbit trails are. One of those rabbit trails is quarreling because he talks about that a lot. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. So in verse 8, he then comes back and says, Remember, Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David, this is my gospel for which I am suffering. This is the central message. Stay on task. Okay. What's one way to get us off task? Quarreling, right? Verse 24, he says, well, he talks about quarreling in verse 14 and, talk, and fleshes it out there, but he comes back again and, and for the rest of that chapter, really, and talks about quarreling. And in verse 24, he says, And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone, able to teach, not resentful. In other words, if we want to be the people of God that God's called us to be, if we want to stay on task, we can't be quarrelsome, right? We've got to be kind to people, show grace, show mercy, show love. Uh, we got to be, for Timothy and for those who are in, in preaching, teaching ministries, we've got to be able to do what we need to do in those ministries. We've got to be able to teach, right? And we can't be resentful. Uh, we can't be uh, hold grudges against people, uh, be mean-spirited, um, be bitter towards people, right? We've got to be kind, gentle, grace-filled, 
humble, able to do what God's called us to do. And uh, if we can do that, then we can be successful. And if we can stay away from quarreling, stay away from the rabbit trails, then we can stay on task and be successful for Christ. <clears throat> a little bit of a dense chapter, a little harder. It's a lot of imagery used in here. Um, some, again, some obscure passages, other obscurities in here. But what I want to leave you with today is, are you on task? Are you staying on task or are you getting sidetracked by rabbit trails? Are you being quarrelsome? Are you arguing just to argue? Are you holding, are you, are you holding bitterness towards folks? Are you resentful towards people? Are you not using your spiritual gifts? Are you being mean or less than kind to other people? Because if you are, if you're not showing those fruit of the Spirit that Paul would talk, talks about in other books and other letters, then you're not staying on task. Because the believer, the follower of Christ stays on task and demonstrates the fruit of the Spirit, which includes kindness and gentleness and humility. He stays away, he or she stays away from bitterness and resentfulness. And they, and they teach, serve, love, right? The things that we're all about at Amalon. Teach, serve, love. If we stay on those three tasks and demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit while we do those three things, teaching, serving, and loving, then we'll be staying on target and not getting sidetracked. Where are you? Where are you? Ask yourself that question. Honestly, ask yourself that question today. Am I staying on task? Let's pray. Father, thank you. And uh, guide us. If we're not on task, get us on the center line of our faith. Help us to see where we're in error and to correct those errors. To be the people that you've called us to be. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, folks, stay on task. I'll see you tomorrow with 2 Timothy chapter 3.